We, we share what the Blue Angels do for the public with all naval aviators. It's just, it's a brotherhood. I don't think it, it's, when people ask me, oh, that's really neat you did that, I said, yeah, that's a long time ago. I had never flown in my life. I didn't know anything about flying. I was at the Naval Academy. In the June week, which was the graduation week, I was caught driving a car, which was against the rules. And so I was given the choice of being in, uh, in hack or restriction in Bancroft Hall during the whole uh, week or coming back and giving up my 30-day uh, leave, leave in the summer. So I uh, chose to take the uh, seven days in hack in, in Bancroft Hall. And uh, I sat in the windows and watched the Blues fly uh, one of their last uh, two years in, uh, in Phantoms. And I went, that looks really neat. And so I chose aviation based on, for four years, seeing the Blue Angels. I went to Softly Field and I was sick my first four or five flights and almost dropped out. And then finally, you know, finally made it through. I, I graduated flight school in uh, September, or actually December of 1976 and uh, was awarded A7s, A7 Corsairs at Cecil Field. Went through the RAG there, VA-174, and my first squadron was uh, V-83, uh, the, the ramp, Rampagers, A7 squadron on the USS Forrestal. Made uh, two Mediterranean cruises, uh, was an LSO, um, and then uh, went from there to uh, the VA-174 VA again as an instructor pilot and uh, that's where I was selected by the Blues. I, I didn't get picked up the first year, and, um, I, and the next year that I applied for the 1982 team, uh, they were only selecting one junior officer. It was a new boss and a new junior officer, and I said, this isn't gonna work. I, I'm not gonna get picked up. And so I was actually leaving on a cross country um, and had a hydraulic failure the weekend the Blues were coming to Cecil Field and came back and showed up in their briefing and, and I'd, I'd been encouraged to reapply and uh, I probably wouldn't have gone to the Blues if I hadn't had a hydraulic failure uh, because I had chosen not to pursue it anymore. So I went back and, and uh, it was a great experience. Denny Wisely was the boss and I started the process again and, and uh, surprisingly got selected. I was initially selected as the uh, narrator number seven. You showed up at winter training in February and you started the narration. Of course, all along you're trying to memorize the narration on index cards and that, was, that didn't come naturally for me. They ended up loving it. I really enjoyed it. I got a little too enthusiastic and they told me about halfway this season, you need to back off on the narration a little bit. You're scaring people. But then I did the media rides and I did a lot of the publicity rides and a lot of the celebrity rides. Uh, uh, Bob Hope's uh, 79th birthday, uh, that, was, that was obviously something very special. One of the things I'm most proud of is I took 80 people flying and I had one person get sick. And that, you know, I didn't think it was my job to go out there and, and make people sick. And that one person had had a big huge breakfast and, <laughs> but the, you know, I thought you could teach, you could show them everything you needed to show them without making them sick. Um, so I was always very proud of that. The memories I take from that are all the people I met, the, the people at the local FBOs when we do. I love the civilian shows because we met all the people on the ground at the FBOs. And uh, I still have longtime friends that I still stay in touch with from, from Cher in Wyoming and some of these little places that, you know, you'd have 10,000 people at the air show. That whole first year was a great experience. The next two years, of course, the best flying I ever did in my life. all through my first winter training as the left wingman I went am I really going to be able to do this and I remember talking to my wife Jan and she's saying this doesn't sound like it's going well and that's pretty much what how everybody feels in winter training but it is it is an incredible challenge to to get over the the uh, ability to realize you can do this uh, probably my fondest memory of flying left wing was uh, when the first time that the uh, solos would join up in Delta and uh, Jim Ross would, he was, I was in the left wing and the, and the lead solo flew the left outpost, so he was on my left wing. And I would always know when Jungle was there because he would come up and he, he wouldn't hit me, but he would get really, really close and I could feel him nudge me because you can really move the, the airplanes around as close as we flew. And so I would always knew and I would go, <laughs> I'd give him a thumbs up, I knew he was there. Uh, 84, um, you know, was finally where I really wanted to be was in the slot and uh, Haas Pearson came in and, um, and Chris Ives became the lead solo. 
The slot pilot uh, technically trains a, a new boss. And uh, the debriefs, uh, I remember the first debrief I sat through, it was, it, it was a, as, a, as an uh, applicant, you didn't sit through the debriefs. You were there for the briefs and then they excused you. The first debrief I sat through, um, we, we leave everything on the, on the uh, briefing room floor. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't really hold anything back. And I was, you know, I was a little surprised at, uh, at, you know, at how frank everybody was about it. But then I realized that was, you know, was, it was necessary with respect it was necessary, you know, and as the slot pilot, you know, you're, for me, I was lieutenant commander and I'm debriefing a commander, the commanding officer. And, um, you know, there'd be some frustration and there'd be, you know, there would be, people would get passionate at times. But I, you know, I hope, and I look back that I never took the step beyond, the, uh, of respect beyond that, that little line he didn't cross. Um, you know, I would disagree with him, but, you know, I was the one that had the bird's eye view back there. And there were times when, you know, I remember one time he said to me, uh, uh, we were doing an air show and we were doing a rival maneuvers and I thought we were working a little low. And I said something and he, I remember he said to me, he says, Cowboy, you're distracting me. And that was probably the only time I really got wound up. I remember in the, in the, in the debrief saying, boss, it's all my only job is to keep us safe. And if I'm distracting you, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I might have been being a little, little you know, conservative, but but it was, uh, it, was, um, it was very dynamic. The slot's the easiest position to fly formation-wise because you have a big gyro in front of you. You got these, these two guys and you're looking and I flew off the boss. But, uh, you know, but you did all the cheats because you, every time you do a roll or a loop, there, there's, there's a, you know, aspect. You have to look at the aspect. And so you always wanted to look, make it look like a diamond. So many times, uh, you know, if the crowd was to the left for a roll, uh, I would end up way underneath number two to make it look like a diamond, whereas if I stayed in the middle, it would look like it was two sections. You know, the diamond 360, which is one of my favorite maneuvers, where that first diamond pass, um, the, the formation looks nothing like a diamond. It's, uh, I'm all the way up on number two and all the way forward, can't even see the most of number two, and number three is, you know, way up underneath. And, uh, you know, so it was all the, we call them cheats. It was, uh, probably the most incredible experience flying I ever had. Our communication got, was so good that I could key the mic and he'd say, cowboy, I know, um, to say something. And it was, uh, that was, uh, I've never connected with somebody in the air like I connected with Haas Pearson. Um, and it was, a, he was a blast to fly behind. I think as a team, uh, we, did a, a, we did exactly what we should have done. I think we, we, uh, we took ourselves off a pedestal. We reconnected with the fleet a little bit. You know, those are some of the goals that we had. I think that we flew some really good air shows. We did some, some pretty neat things in 84. We actually brought the, uh, had the middle, middle season Pensacola over the beach show back. That was my goal from the very beginning. I said, we need to come back to Pensacola and do an over the beach show. And it had been the 60s, I think, since they'd done that before. And it was kind of hard because we gave up a weekend that could have gone to somebody else. But I thought in the middle of the season, it was good to have everybody home for a couple of weeks. And we actually did a practice show on Thursday, Friday, the, the main show on Saturday. We did the newbie party Saturday night, and we took Sunday and Monday off. So everybody could kind of get their batteries recharged with their families. But that, over, that was the best air show I ever flew in, was the uh, 1984 uh, Pensacola Beach Air Show. That uh, we, had, we had not just six guys, we had a whole team, you know, from the, the best maintenance group I ever worked with in my life. To the to the the folks that took care of us administratively and you know a self-contained unit, it took all of those people to put that uh, a show in front of the um, in front of the um, and in front of the public and do what we were trying to do and that's make people proud of their nation, make people uh, re help recruit. Um, I have I have had people at uh, at Delta Airlines and Northwest Airlines where I spent 30 years um, and uh, come up to me and say you know. I got into the Navy because I was in the air show when I was 12 years old and I met you. Of course, it makes me feel real old, but I've had people tell me that. So I see how much it meant to people. But the, the teamwork, um, uh, I, I feel like it was something I got a chance to do, um, but it's, it's something that my aviation, my naval aviation training provided me with the skill set to do that. That to me, and my memories of the blues are, the good memories are always the people.